your dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now, but something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman Podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman Podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. Well, hello there, Driven Woman. Today's solo episode is a little bit of a walk down memory lane to one of my earliest solo episodes. I'm going to link to it in the show notes. That one was called Your Brain is Not Your Friend. Today's update is Make Success a no-brainer. So if you like what you hear from me today in this episode, you're going to want to click on the link in the show notes and have a listen to Your Brain is Not Your Friend. Because even though these concepts might sound a little basic for those who have been listening to The Driven Woman for a while, I promise you they are absolutely mind-blowing and game-changing. In fact, I would even say these concepts should be taught to children as early as elementary school, because what we don't understand about how our minds and brains work absolutely holds us back, all of us. So what I want to talk to you today about is how often I see with the female entrepreneurs that I work with, they often know exactly what they need to do to be more successful. They don't think they know, and they will ask me, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. But it's not that simple. And frankly, I don't want to create dependent clients. I want to create clients that think for themselves and have confidence in their own decision making. So if I tell them what to do and how to do it, they're not going to get that. They might think I'm amazing. I want them to think they're amazing. That's a good outcome, in my opinion. And what leads us to make good decisions and have good outcomes is thinking like a successful person. Believe it or not, at every single level of income, revenue, profit, visibility, celebrityhood, if you will, every single level of success, we are holding ourselves back. Most of the time, we don't realize it. Now, I think there are many causes for this, but one cause that affects nearly everyone is the thoughts that we are thinking. The thoughts we are thinking about ourselves, about our potential and capacity for success, about what success will mean when it happens at whatever mythical level that we haven't yet achieved. And it just doesn't work that way. I work with women at every level, from brand newbie entrepreneurs until those who are in seven and eight figures. And just about every single one of them has this problem, learned thoughts. Thoughts they learned to think about themselves, about what they're capable of, about what it means to be successful, about making certain amounts of money, having a certain amount of notoriety, being at the top of your field. And those thoughts, which are largely unconscious, are not the thoughts that serve them. I'm talking about the thoughts that they learned in childhood. And when we learn about who we are and what we're capable of in childhood, sometimes we can remember. We can remember that first grade teacher or that difficult parent or that older sibling, and we will never forget them saying, you're stupid, you're lazy, you're crazy, nobody cares what you think, you're never going to amount to anything, and all of that kind of nonsense. Some of the time we remember those things, but most of the time, our thoughts and opinions about ourselves, our ability to be successful, are buried in so deep, we don't even realize we're thinking them. Now, if you've heard me talk about the difference between thoughts and beliefs, then you have heard me say there's really no difference. 
a lot of people think beliefs have a lot more oomph to them. But I think that any thought can become a belief if you have more practice thinking it and if there is an emotional charge. So if you think I'm stupid, I am so stupid, I am the biggest dumbass ever, and I will only be successful to the degree that I can cover that shit up and people don't know how stupid I am because then they won't want to work for me, work with me, do business with me and so forth. If that is a belief that you hold on any level, I promise you, you learned to think that a long time ago. In fact, you might not even be able to remember a time that you didn't think that. And this is irrespective of whether your older brother or abusive father or uncle or whomever, your teacher, your soccer coach, your whoever, babysitter, whoever encouraged you to adopt that belief about yourself, whether you remember them or not, in the earliest years of life, we don't have a brain full of facts and memories. We have what I call an empty field of fertile soil. So in the early years, let's say zero to seven, any thought seeds that get thrown at that soil are going to sink in and with very little watering and very little sunlight, they're going to develop roots. Those roots are actual physical structures in the human brain that we all have called neural pathways. Now, why does the brain create neural pathways? Because they're shortcuts. Think about this. You get one brain for life. Let's say you live on average 80 years. Do you realize you are never, ever going to be able to buy more memory for that brain you were born with. You are never going to be able to get a faster processor. You're never going to be able to buy a stronger, more powerful brain. You literally are stuck with the brain you were born with for life. So the brain creates these shortcuts in the way of neural pathways for efficiency. Because every single thought, every single emotion, every single experience, every single memory if you had to store those individually, you would have run out of space in that brain decades ago. And then it would be like, sorry, full, can't take any more inventory, just going to have to work with what we've got. And that's not how it works. But those shortcuts, those neural pathways, most of which were formed in childhood, mean that unless you do some serious inquiry and some serious effort, which we are going to get into in the second half of this episode, I promise, you are going to continue to think the same thoughts about yourself for life. And if you were lucky enough to grow up in a family, in a neighborhood, in a culture, with a mindset that you are brilliant and you are capable and you can create whatever level of success you desire, you, my friend, are in the minority. Most of us are trying to achieve and are striving for success, working with the broken down, crabby old thoughts that we're not smart enough, we're not strong enough, we're not capable enough, we're not interesting enough. Why would anybody want to invest in us, buy from us, work for us, be our clients or customers? And that shit is going to hold you back. Now, I'm a huge fan of personal growth. I have invested in personal growth, spiritual growth, therapy, coaching for many years. And I'm sure you have too. And even though that's the case, I am sorry to tell you that without diligent effort and constant monitoring, those shitty thoughts from my childhood are ever at the ready to hold me down and hold me back. So, this is where imposter syndrome finds its home. This is where that insecurity that just keeps its hold on you, no matter how many degrees, no matter how many certifications, no matter how many successes, no matter how many testimonials, compliments, no matter how many dollars are in your bank account, you may still have those thoughts. And with my clients, I see it come up in a couple of different ways. And this is how I know this is exactly what's happening. They'll say, well, I know it's possible 
to achieve this level of success. I just don't know if it's possible for me. Okay. And if you've thought that, okay, here's a clue. Or, well, I know how to make money, Diane. (laughs) I just don't know how to receive it. So when I get a lot of money, when I get that big deal, that big client, that big contract, I find a way to fuck it up for myself. So not only are we talking about the root of imposter complex or syndrome, it's also called, we are talking about these neural pathways, these stinking thinking thoughts from childhood. They are at the root of your limiting beliefs, your upper limit issues, your self-sabotage, all of it. Because there's a disconnect between these automatic, unconscious, shortcut default thoughts. Your brain just keeps serving up to you like a short order cook. Every time you go into the restaurant, you sit down. Let's say you want fettuccine Alfredo. No, you're going to get a burger and fries. I didn't order that. Yeah, but that's what you're getting. That's how your brain works. You may be trying your damnedest to upgrade, up level, think bigger. But if you do not understand what to do about those unconscious thoughts, it's very likely that they will form the basis of your deepest, darkest fears, your doubts, your insecurities. Hell, they will even sneak into your fucking dreams. And trust me, I have clients who tell me about unbelievably scary dreams that they have on the regular. And usually they happen just as they're about to have their biggest breakthroughs. Most people think I must be cray cray that this is happening to me. Or they might have a business coach, not me, who tells them you aren't committed or you don't really want it. If you really wanted it, you would double down, you'd go all in, and you wouldn't look back. But I have been studying neuroscience and personal growth and recovery from trauma for over 25 years. And what I know about the brain is that your brain will keep on with the default unconscious thinking until you have a reliable way that you use regularly when you see yourself defaulting to those old thoughts. Now, you're not going to immediately start practicing this and immediately start seeing results. I mean, maybe you will. And if you do, please, please, please DM me and let me know. But most people will say, yeah, well, okay. Isn't that just positive thinking? Nope. Isn't that like brainwashing? No. It is literally identifying the old thoughts that have taken root in the fertile soil of your child brain that are still circulating. And every time one of them crops up, you are there with a rubber mallet like whack a frickin' mole. And sometimes you don't have to hit them over the head. Like everybody goes about this a different way. Some people like to think of themselves as Pac-Man or Whack-A-Mole. And every time I see one of these old, shitty, dumbass, limiting thoughts come up in my head, I know they're not true. I know they were never true. Or maybe they were true like 40 years ago. But regardless, they don't serve you now. They are not showing up in your brain because they're the real deal. They are not showing up because they're true, they're reality, and you thinking you could be successful is like fantasy land. That's not why. You see, your brain, every brain, my brain, all brains, are lazy motherfuckers. It's not their fault. It's just that you got to figure the brain is this little three-pound organ, this little watery organ, the consistency of tofu that resides in your brain. But even though it's three pounds, it consumes 25% of the calories that your entire body needs every single day. So it's kind of an energy hog and it's a greedy little bugger, but it has to be lazy or your head would literally explode or you'd have to eat like 50,000 calories every day just to run your brain. So Your brain has to create shortcuts. It's nothing personal. It's not some kind of brain anorexia. 
your brain has to create these shortcuts like every other brain, but it's your job to see that that's what's happening so you can literally outsmart your brain with your mind. Now, we're going to take a quick little break for this little message, and then we're going to get right back in here with what to do about it. Stay here. Hey, it's Diane with a quick interruption to the episode because I've got a couple questions I just need to ask you. One, are you where you want to be in your business? Are you making the money you want to make, working the hours you want to work, seeing the clients that you want to see, and getting the income and impact that you went into business to get? And if the answer is no, what's holding you back? Why is there a gap between where you are and where you want to be? Do you know the answer? In my experience working with female solopreneurs, so many of them don't even really know what's standing in their way. And that is so frustrating. So I created a little quiz called What's Holding You Back? There's a link to it in the show notes. If this is you, please take the quiz. And if you do, DM me on Instagram at Coach Diane Wingert and let me know your results. Now, on the other hand, if you already know what's holding you back, if you already know what the obstacles are that are getting in your way from achieving the income and impact that you deserve and desire, then I don't want you to take the quiz. Forget about the quiz. Go directly to the other link in the show notes and book a consult with me. I may be the very coach and this may be the year that you put all of that behind you and really have the business that you went into business to have. For everybody else, keep on listening. And if you find value in what you hear, don't forget to leave me a rating and review on Apple or wherever you're listening. Here we go. Back to the show. Well, one thing that you helped give me insight on is how sensitive I am. And because I'm an empath, being in traffic and loud noises throughout the day, just getting to the getting to homes, that alone was really draining. And now working from home, it's like I'm able to conserve that energy and working with the parents to really teach them kind of concepts and bigger things that have a bigger impact. This is one thing that you also mentioned was because I was working so much, I didn't have time to do the things that were meaningful to me. And that included learning, getting into the grind. You kind of just like, okay, well, I'm just going to do instead of really stepping back and looking at yeah, more strategic ways to have you know a longer term plan. Okay, welcome back. We have been talking about the fact that thoughts and beliefs are exactly the same. Beliefs just feel stronger because you have more practice with them. They're also not true, even if they once were. They definitely do not serve you. And the brain is a lazy mofo that really just wants to maintain the status quo. And on that basis, the brain will always throw shade on any new idea you have. You have a new idea for a podcast, for a book, for a program. You want to do a joint venture partnership with somebody you met online who's super cool. Your brain will throw shade on that every time. Maybe not immediately, but before you actually take action, you can bet on it because your brain will have to work harder when you do something new. Your brain has to work harder if you even think something new. So all those new ideas, all those great, big, wonderful, bound to be successful ideas make your brain tired. Your brain doesn't want to be tired. Your brain has got to nurse those 25% of the total body calories to get through the whole day. And then it's got to do it again tomorrow. So a crafty, sneaky little trick your brain has is to remind you of every negative thought you've ever had about yourself and your potential. It will remind you of every time you've made a mistake, every time you've had a reverse or a loss, every time you trusted the wrong person, hired the wrong team member, and all of that. And then you'll think, oh shit, what was I thinking? I'm not ready to go to seven figures. I, I should just stay right where I am and be grateful. 
But that's just your brain doing what brains do best. You see, it's not your brain's job to make you happy. It is not your brain's job to make you satisfied. It is not your brain's job to make sure you are fulfilled. And it is definitely not your brain's job for you to be successful in business. It is your mind's job for that to happen. So in order for your mind to outsmart your brain, you need to be aware of what kind of ideas your brain is going to throw up and say, oh, basically, that's a terrible idea. What's the matter with staying right where you are? You know, this could go really poorly, right? Hey, remember that other friend that you had who did something like this and lost everything? That's the kind of stuff your brain will offer you. And it'll almost sound like it's trying to be helpful, but it's just trying to conserve calories by maintaining your status quo thoughts. So if you are determined to be successful, however you define that, if you are determined to grow your business, to scale your business, to raise your prices, to seek out and find better clients, to sell your business, to retire early, whatever your level of success is and however you define it, you have to outsmart your brain so that success becomes a no brainer. Now, here is my best mind hack for this. Are you ready? Instead of asking yourself, am I ready for this? Can I handle this? Do I actually know how to do this? Can I pull this off with my current team? How much is this going to cost me? What if it doesn't work out? Those are terrible questions to ask your brain, because given your brain's lazy mofo mindset, it's going to say, oh, yeah, please don't even think about it. What you need to do instead is ask yourself, if this level of success that I am striving for, I am seeking, I desire, how would I be thinking if I were already there? How would I be thinking if I were already there? Well, chances are you wouldn't be doing it in isolation. You would get help. You would get coaching. You would get consultation. You would get accountability for one thing. And for two, you wouldn't be asking, what am I going to do when it falls apart? How am I going to get over this? How am I going to wipe the egg off my face? You will be saying to yourself, what do I need to do to virtually guarantee this? What do I need to think to make this outcome inevitable? That is a totally different kind of question, my friend. Instead of thinking, what the hell is the matter with me? Or why can't I be satisfied with the level of success I'm at now? You know what you're going to get for that. Ask yourself, if I were already there, what thoughts would I be thinking? What actions would I be taking? What kind of help would I be receiving? What team members would I be hiring? How much would I be getting paid for this? Who would I partner with? Those kind of questions are the way we outsmart our brain and literally make success a no-brainer. It's not like you don't need your brain. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love my freaking brain. But I understand my brain is not responsible for my success. My mind is responsible for my success. So I believe the mind needs to be the boss of the brain. And the brain needs to be the boss of the body. If you leave your brain in charge, you will stay small and scared. If you put your mind in first place and let it give the walking orders to the brain, it can tell the brain, you don't need to worry about this, my friend. We've got this. We're already there. In fact, one of the techniques that I like to teach and I think works extremely well is when you decide what your desired outcome is. And you recognize and identify what are the thoughts 
I will be thinking when I do? And what are the questions I need to ask myself to map out my path? And then you literally write that shit down. You reverse engineer today's thoughts from tomorrow's success and work backwards. This is not a trick. This is not, it's a little bit of a hack, but it just depends on the understanding that if you are not reaching success with the thoughts you're thinking now, what have you got to lose by trying on better thoughts? From my perspective, you got nothing to lose. If you try this technique and if you have any level of success with it, please write a review for this podcast, mention this episode, and let me know how you applied it and what happened. Send me a DM. In fact, I will go one more. If you try this technique and it does not work for you, I want you to let me know that too, because chances are there's a little tweak, just a little shift in your thinking that will make all the difference. I have every confidence in this technique, and I have every confidence that if you use it, it will literally unlock your full potential. So give it a try and let me know. That's all for now. I will be back next week with a guest. So see you soon. Bye for now. You've been listening to the Driven Woman Podcast with Diane Wingert. One more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning. Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.